Welcome to video number two, I guess, or one. It's technically the first video in the series where I actually do anything. So we're going to be opening up Houdini today and we're talking about the interface and navigating around it. Very simple, very simple functions as well of Houdini uh, and where to find certain things. Um, it's nothing, nothing crazy. It's just to get you introduced to the interface. So let's open up Houdini speed test on the SSD here. So once you start it up, you'll get this and you'll get another message as well, which doesn't appear for me, but I, I don't want to participate. Oh, there we go. There it is. And you uncheck that. Um, so first off, let's just talk about how to move the camera. That's like the most simple thing, right? So by default in your interface, it will be on the camera mode. So that's over here. <coughs> Sorry, I got a bit of a cold, but basically this secure selection thing, if I'm if I'm on any other selection, it will have a cursor instead of a hand. And that, that means I can't I can't move move it by default. If I hold alt I can. So moving uh, and to get out of any of these selections, just click escape. That's always how you do it. Escape and then whatever you want to do. So um Alt plus left click is move around or rotate. Uh middle click or Alt plus middle click is to shift from left to right up and down and Alt right click is to zoom in. We can change to another perspective. There's shortcuts for this, which is all these here. They're all labeled. And then we can create cameras up here or we can create them down here in the network view. I'm going to be referring to both of these in this tutorial. So we've got the scene view and the network view. So if I was just to go and click tab, We've got our menu here and um, we can create a camera and that's going to drop down right in the center of our scene. But if we go up here to our shelf tool, uh, the shelf tools are basically like presets inside of um, any other program. They often contain a lot of setups or are pre-built like in pyro effects. You've got setups for smoke, which if you've got an object you want to emit from, you just select the object and then control click up here and it'll create your smoke. Um, or fluid or whatever you've, you want to create. The shelf tool, if you control click on it, allows you to create a camera where you stay. And over here is our, our lock to camera view. And whenever we move that you see up here, it changes. This is this is a function you're changing, tie, to, tie view to camera. And this allows us to move the position of the camera in the viewport. If I was to uncheck this and move, oh, we're outside our camera now and you can move this camera about in the scene yourself. And um, this is the selection function. Uh, so basically, as you can see, we've got our cursor instead of a, a hand here. And that's because over here, we've got the show handle. And for each object, there's an, a kind of bespoke amount of settings you'll get. Like for transform, this allows you to, it gives you an axis. If you're using like a, a curve tool, it will give you um, a little point thing on your scene so you can click and create a point for uh, you know a curve you can create you can basically draw one out um, and when you click escape you won't have any UI controls in your scene view for these objects and then over here we've got our transform which this is our our parameters over here for whatever object we've got selected you can lock the parameter so it's basically like if I lock this here and then create another object like a geo, it's not going to change to our geo node. But if I uncheck it, it's going to ch it's going to change to whatever we've got selected. And this is available in pretty much everything. You've got lock over here. You can lock your scene view. You can lock your um, your network view. Whatever you want. Um, and and the way that you will move or change these values here, if you want to move on X, you hold middle click and drag left or right. And you can drag, before you drag left or right, you can drag up and down to change the increments in which you increase or decrease this value here. And obviously you can type this in yourself and do whatever. Oh, I'm playing. Uh, let's talk about display settings. So I'm going to click H here. That will center our scene. You can see it said home down here. That's whatever function I click. And then G will um, center whatever you've got selected over here. Um, and I'll talk about mouse position later and why that's important. But display settings, if we click D, 
we've got a lot of settings. Um, if I go to the guides, we can turn off this red thing in the center. I can turn off the grid, which is up here. I can change the background color, which can be very useful when you're working with um, particles. It can be hard to see. Um, and then you've also got, uh, where is it? You've got show time, so you've got your FPS and you've got like video safe areas and stuff like that if you are doing like an actual project. So I'm gonna revert these to default. Nice, okay. So now I'm going to be talking about object and geometry level. So right now we're on object level and up here we can create cameras, we can create geo nodes which will contain geometry um, where you can create your setups, like you can add a sphere in there, you can do whatever. Um, and I also didn't talk about in the shelf tool when you single click instead of in, instead of um, just, uh, just a left click instead of a, a control click, it gives you a bounding box and you can move it about and choose where you put it but I don't normally do this. I'll just do that inside my node. So right now we're gonna create a sphere. So we can, I'm just gonna do this um, by creating a geo node, but if we were to create a sphere, it's gonna create a geo node, which is this. You can get information on nodes over here. And in this, in this little box here, it will show you what type of node it is, where it is, in reference to your scene. So right now the path is OBJ, it's just on OBJ, object level. And then down here, if we're inside the geometry node and we're looking at a SOP, which is a surface operator, we'll have all our attributes down here. And I'll show you that now. Um, also, you can hide these as well. So let's jump in here and we've got our sphere. This is a surface operator. So if I go over here and show the node info, we've got SOP surface operator uh, and it's a sphere and we've got one attribute which is our position which is wherever we move this to and currently this is a representation of a sphere it's not actually a sphere primitive so if i go to polygon we've actually got a real sphere now that will be rendered in our render view but let's just leave it as a actually no i'll change it back to primitive i want to want to be able to manipulate this and if you don't have any points then you won't be able to manipulate this geometry. So let's talk about flags. So over here are, are these little things that are colored or flags, uh, and these are quite important. So we've got our display slash render. If I wanted to just show something in the render, I can do, I've created a new node now, and I'll click T, and then that sets it to render. Uh, so, so basically that will just show in the render but it won't show anything because it's just a null. But if I was to go over here, that is going to show a sphere now when I render this out. I'll delete that now. Uh, and we've got template as well. So I'm going to alt drag. You can control C, control V to do the same thing, but alt dragging will create a duplicate of your node. And if I put on the template, it's going to just do what it says on the tin and create these templates you can create as many of these as you want and it will show in your viewport but not the render. And I'll talk about G as well. If you click G instead of H, it will center all your nodes here. So since these are templated, it's not going to work, but I could put this into a merge, which is a really important node I'll be talking about later. And that's going to center all those that we've got selected. So I'll delete all that. Right, so now the other one, we've got lock. Basically, whatever I do here is not going to appear until I unlock this node. And uh, another important shortcut is if you do control middle click, it will reset to the default value that we had here. So I can do this on whatever value I want. And if you right click, you can find the shortcut. If you forget or whatever, you can find the shortcut up here. Um, for revert to default. And then the last one, which is bypass. So for example, if I put down another great node, which is transform, and let's move this using this tool over here, this access tool, which shortcut is enter, which will only work when you're hovering over here. That's why mouse position is important. See if I click enter over here, nothing happens. Enter over here. We get our bespoke option to move this along an axis. 
and again escape will take you out of this and allow you to rotate around your scene without clicking alt. So now if I do bypass which shortcut is B, it will ignore this node and you don't have to delete it so you can see what the node is doing in your scene and how it's affecting your object. Now if I just delete this now. The shortcut to um, make something render or this flag here which will basically show your object is R which I'm going to be using a lot as well so keep that in mind. Um, and now let's go and put down a, a mountain sop. So this is a really simple node that basically will add a noise to your, your geometry and this is a good place to start. Another useful function is um, to delete a node uh, wire we can either select it like this by dragging or we can click do that or we can click Y which will give us our little scissors and we can cut it like that and then let go of, of left mouse button and hold and still hold Y and then there you go that's your wire cut like that. So now seems like a good time to talk about these breadcrumbs up here and how to go back and forward and in and out of your networks. So the shortcut to go back is U and the shortcut to go forward is I. So when we go U we're at we're on OBJ level now and if we go I then we're right back into our, our geo node with our, our spheres for a SOP here. Ooh, I don't know how to speak. So um, you can also click up here to go back and if you hold then you can look at your other networks which we aren't going to be talking about for a while now um, and also you can click in between uh, the current network you're in and the one before it and see uh, what's on object level. So if I go up here and add a box, you'll see that this box is going to get added to the menu here. Another important thing, another really useful shortcut to kind of optimize your, your workflow, I guess, is to, to use these quick marks. So if you do control one, it will set your quick mark. And if you go U to go back, go into your box, do control two, you'll set quick mark two. Now you can freely click one and two and go in between these two, which is really useful. I'm going to demonstrate how being inside a SOP affects the other objects on object level. So if I go up here and create a box, again, you can do this by just creating a geometry node. Let's just do that. So if I just type in geo, create a box. There we go, we've got our box. And by default up here, it's ghosting the other object, but we can change this to hide, or we can change this to fully show it, like it would look if we were on object level. And for example, if I want to remain in this view, for whatever reason, I click up here, and it's just like when I was talking about this lock function over here, this follow selection thing. I'm look, I should be seeing a sphere right now, but it's because I've locked this over here. So yeah, that's another useful thing. Um, and I'll talk about parenting as well, just while I'm at it. You know, we're doing 3D tutorials here, but you know, I'd like to switch it up a little bit. So for example, if I wanted the sphere to, to be a parent to the box, we just do that and then that's parented now. Whatever we do with a sphere, it's going to follow, rotate it. We click, you know, over here to get our bespoke options and rotate it, whatever you want to do. So another little tidbit is that you can, uh, when you select an object, if you click R, it will hide it. This is um, a global change that is taken into account into rendering. So if it's, it's hidden in the viewport, it's going to be hidden in rendering as well. Um, and now I'm going to be talking about mouse position. Now mouse position is really important. If you've not used a 3D program before, you might not. It might not come as easy to you, but if you use another 3D program before, you should you should be pretty at home with this. But essentially what I mean by mouse positioning is that stuff that I do over here or shortcuts are, are, are over in the scene view may not be the exact same as the ones in the network view. So a couple ones to note is if I was to do H over here or G. So G, remember, is the... Uh, center whatever you've got selected. If I was to go over here and click 
S or I'll go over here and click the select and then do G. If I do escape in G, you've got to make sure you do escape before literally anything in the scene view, just as a, a sort of a good practice to get into. It will center whatever you've got selected. So that's really important to keep in mind. Also, you've got a different tab menu over here. So uh, the reason that you have this mainly is that if I was to go and uh, go inside one of these, like go inside the box, right? Now we ha can select faces. So up here, I'm going to talk about these later uh, in the modeling stuff, but we're on primitive right now. So we can select a face. So if I select that face and then I do poly extrude, poly extrude just to be correct about it, you can extrude this in here and it's going to put in the group whatever face number this is. Um, but if I was to go over here and then, you know, so let's say I have this selected again and I go over here and then do poly extrude, append that, it's not going to put anything in the group. So that's essentially why these are different. But pretty much most of the time you're going to be putting nodes in over here on your network view. But it's just important to keep in mind if you're like, ah, oh, why is this not going down when I have my mouse over here? That's a reason a lot of shortcuts are independent to where your mouse is. And now moving stuff. So if I go over here and then I go to move, we can move this along this axis. Uh, you can hold shift to move things slowly. This also uh, happens when you are moving the camera. So if you're moving the camera around and you hold shift, it's gonna go very slowly. So if you've got a really big scene and you wanna move something slower, that's how you do it. And also if you middle click and drag, just anywhere you can kind of freely move things around. Um, and if I go and do escape and two, which is a shortcut to go into uh, the top view, as you can see here, uh, if I just uh, click T for move and then, you know, middle click, it's just going to move on these two axes, which is very useful. Um, but you also have these tiny boxes here, which you might not notice at first, but this essentially will move it on a 2D axis without you having to go into a separate uh, view. Uh, and finally, finally, we're getting there. So rotation, so rotation shortcut R, we um, we can hold control and quantize, we can freely rotate. And if I rotate this and then click M, bearing in mind you can find a lot of these shortcuts in here. I don't actually remember where this, I think, yeah, a line handle. So if I click M, then we're going to get world position. So this is really useful for like, if you're rotating a HDRI and you just want to rotate it on Y, but if I want to go back to my object position, just hit M a few times and back you are to your original object position handle. I'm going to be doing another tutorial showing the simple nodes inside of Houdini and how to use them, which will be quite short, but I just wanted to separate it from this tutorial. Um, I hope this was useful. If I didn't explain anything, please just tell me and I'll, I'll get to it. Um, and I'll see you in the next video if you haven't killed yourself already.